This past week, we would get a small taste of the next Russian phenom. That is Mate Michkov. As not only did he put up an unbelievable 12 goals, 16 points in 7 U18 games, but in his first MHL season, he would pass the production of Russian Hall of Famers. Except, there still is a massive downside to Michkov. That is, Matt Bay plays for SKA St. Petersburg. And if you're not too familiar with this team or just the KHL in general, well, they don't really like the idea of NHL teams taking their players, especially child phenoms. Thus, they signed Michkov until 2026, even though he is draft eligible in 2023. Meaning, even if Mafe is drafted first overall, which is a real possibility, his KHL team may not even let him come to the NHL, which will definitely hurt Michkov's draft stock. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you got it. This right here is what is referred to the Russian factor. A power so strong, it can make teams pass on an elite talent just so they don't have to deal with the risks associated with dealing with Russian contracts or the possibility that they never even come to the NHL. And that's the thing. In every NHL draft since the days of Canada versus Russia, the miracle on ice, there has been persistent tension between the two leagues. And as a result, we have seen numerous cases of teams completely writing off prospects because of the Russian factor. To explain the monumental tension between the NHL and Russia, let's first take a look at Alexander McGillney. As my man Alex was ranked as one of the best prospects in the world, as he would even put up 18 points in 7 World Junior games in his draft year. Not to mention he would tear up what would have been similar to the KHL as a 16 year old. McGillney was just an extremely special talent, and even though he looked like the next Russian phenom, he would be drafted in the 5th round because, well, nobody even thought there was a chance he'd come over to North America. And that is until Alexander McGillney literally had to defect from the Soviet Union, aka he basically had to illegally desert his own country in order to come to the NHL. I mean, talk about the Russian factor, McGillney basically had to risk his own life to come to North America. And well, a nice 127 point season here, a 76 goal season there, a nice Maurice Richard and Stanley Cup trophy, further reinforcing that Russia basically had an untapped gold mine of potential phenoms that could be drafted in the fifth round. From his knees, Rippin Reinhardt knocked it away, now turned over, Kucherov scores! Nikita Kucherov and Russia's on the ball! Nikita Kucherov. Believe it or not, Kucherov in his draft year would put up an extremely impressive 58 points in only 41 MHL games. Not to mention, my man would literally score his way into the record books. Because on the world stage, so there's no excuse for Skelets not seeing him, Kucherov would put up 21. 21 points in 7 U18 games. Ridiculous numbers that you'd think would point towards a franchise player. I mean, other first round picks in this draft had like one third the points of Kucherov in this tournament. So flash forward to today, 2021. Kucherov has slam dunked on his entire draft class. As he currently leads the entire draft class in NHL scoring, playing over 170 less games. Yet, Kucherov with the production of a phenom would be passed on 57 times, as Kucherov was nearly a third round pick, which is very confusing. I mean, scouts summarized him as a game breaker. What scout goes, game breaker, third, fourth round pick. That, that just doesn't happen. Now he was slightly small, standing in at 5'10", 5'11", but you'd think his scale would kind of take priority. And he would slide so far, just because he had a two year agreement with his KHL team. Crazy. Because here's the thing, Cooch would come to the CHL and light it up. He would come to the AHL and light it up. His first full NHL season, a 30 goal scorer. Kucherov displayed consistent and upwards development his entire career. Yet, it didn't matter. Russian factor, baby. Good. Yes. Okay, back to that one. Well, it's only been two days, but- Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov. Coming into the NHL this season, 
Kaprizov has had the most dominant rookie season since his fellow Russian in Artemi Panarin. Now, just like Panarin, I will say there definitely is a large caveat that Kaprizov was drafted now six years ago and is 24, but 51 points in 55 games, well, that's impressive no matter what. But here's the thing, Kaprizov was drafted in the fifth round. So not only did your team pass on a potential franchise player, but they had the chance to draft him five separate times. Jimbo! No, for real though, Kaprizov in his draft year was still a stud. Eight points in 31 KHL games, two points in three MHL games, and four points in four U18 games. Definitely not eye-popping numbers, but still, not bad. Kaprizov was the definition of a low-risk, high-reward player. And it begs the question, if we keep seeing players like Kaprizov or even Kuch or Panarin shock the hockey world, will teams start to use more draft picks taking flyers on Russian stars? I mean, a team can literally go through a 10-year drought of late-round draft picks not turning out. So more so, it seems like a no-brainer to take some risks on skilled players developing in other professional leagues. Because right after he was drafted, Kirill would set the KHL on fire, further reinforcing that he was overlooked as a Russian and probably just didn't get the respect he deserved. Because this season specifically, Kirill has made every GM in the NHL think twice before passing on a Russian gem. Alexander Radulov. Playing in Russia 2, a second tier Russian professional league, kinda reminiscent to the AHL, Radulov would put up an extremely impressive 31 points in 42 games. As a 17 year old playing against ex-NHL players in men, Impressive, on top of putting up 7 points in 6 U18 games. Overall, Radulov was described as a dynamic Russian goal scorer, with the potential to be a first line winger. Yet, with no downside, Radulov with the resume of a top 5 pick would fall all the way down to pick number 15 just because of the Russian factor. Which was so ironic considering that Radulov the very next season would pack his bags and come play for Patrick Waugh in the QMJHL, probably the complete opposite of the KHL. And this is where teams realize they really messed up. 75 points in his first season in North America. Okay, not bad. 152 points the very next season. We're talking Crosby numbers now. And Radulov would be that player, as he would walk in and prove his 30-40 goal upside. Except, even though he made every team in the NHL regret that they didn't pick him because he was Russian, he himself would also make the Russian factor even worse. Because after seeing development and Nashville committing to the new phenom, this was around the time that the KHL was formed, and they wanted Radulov back. In fact, they offered him a bag, as they wanted him to be the face of the league, which is why Radulov would abruptly abandon his NHL team by leaving the NHL for the KHL for over 8 years, making the NHL teams now more afraid that their Russian players will too just abruptly leave to Russia. As not only did he go back, but he was paid far more than NHL players. I mean, back in 2012, Radulov would sign a contract that would be worth roughly 9 million per season, which would have made him one of the highest paid players in the NHL. In fact, he would have made more than Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. However, after eight long years, Radulov would again make his return to the NHL. But now at the age of 30, and not the next phenom, he still is a stud. But again, adds an entire new layer that only reinforces the Russian factor. But anyways guys, has your team, or can you think of another Russian prospect that was simply passed on in the draft because of the Russian factor? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. And as always, thanks for watching.